Hey there, coming to you from Olympic National Park. The mountains behind me. Let me try and show you. Pretty awesome. So I had a friend of mine ask me the other day or make a comment about the fact that her daughter experiences a lot of anxiety. And I, that's something that I, I think we can all relate to. I know I can relate to it too. And in fact, today was experiencing some puzzling anxiety, which you might think you're on a road trip, on a vacation, why would you possibly have anxiety? And that's the sneaky thing I think about anxiety is that we often don't know why it comes up. And I don't know that figuring that out is always the most helpful thing for us to do. So I wanted to do a quick meditation with a practice that I think has helped me with my anxiety navigate it a little bit better. But I want to say a couple of things off the bat. First of all, there's a tendency, I think, when we experience anxiety or any heavy, difficult, challenging emotion, whether it's anger or sadness or anxiety or depression, to want to push it away, to wish it wasn't there, to think that there's something, quote, wrong with us to want to wonder, why is this here? Why can't I get rid of this? Why does this keep happening? I think I might have talked about this a little bit in one of the other meditations the other day. And that's perfectly natural to have those thoughts. And the invitation I want to extend to you is to notice when you're having those thoughts about the anxiety, their heavy emotion. And we'll work with that a little bit in the practice. But what tends to happen is we'll feel the anxiety or the heavy emotion and then we will start going into this spiral, this loop of wondering why it's there, wishing it wasn't there, and then beating ourselves up Hi, for having that emotion. And so we start to get, for example, anxious about our anxiety and then we start getting anxious about the fact that we're getting anxious about the anxiety and it creates this cycle, this loop. And so this practice is really designed to help with that piece of it, to start to recognize when we're getting in that loop of the thoughts about the anxiety or whatever other heavier emotion there might be at the time. And then the second thing with this practice and the thing I think that's so easy to overlook is that not only do we have those thoughts and get in that loop but then we start to focus on it so much not liking the fact that we feel this way wishing we didn't feel this way and that actually not only does it create that thought loop but it starts to feed the anxiety even more so there's a reason for the cute little hashtag phrase, what you resist persists. Because the more we wish the anxiety wasn't there, the more it's going to be there. So remembering back to the meditation from the other day, if we can kind of create some space for it to be there, recognizing that it can sort of float in this bigger space of everything that's going on in our bodies and around us, then we can start to resist it less. And there's a better phrase that I actually like. It's actually an equation that was developed by Buddhist monks Shinzen Yang that I love, which is suffering equals pain times resistance. So you're going to have pain. You're going to have anxiety or sadness or anger or depression, whatever it is. The more you resist it, the more you suffer. So pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. 
So the less that we can resist the pain, the less we will suffer. And that's what this practice is kind of designed to do. So this is a practice for adults, for kids. Um, <clears throat> if you're a parent of a child, it'd be good to go through this practice with your child, support them through it. Um, and know that, again, this is a practice. So the more you can do this kind of formal practice, the more you can do this kind of practice in the moment, maybe in a moment during a difficult, challenging situation where you notice you start experiencing some anxiety, you can do this practice. And this is a RAIN practice, R-A-I-N. And I'll walk you through this, but the R is for recognize, the A is for allow, the I is for inquiry with what's going on, not a mental inquiry, uh, uh, in the body inquiry, and I'll walk you through that. And the N is for nurture seeing what you need in this moment, not to make the anxiety go away, but to give yourself some compassion, some care, maybe talk to the anxiety a little bit. Because here's the thing, the anxiety, as difficult and challenging as it is, it's trying to protect you. From what? I don't know. It may not, it can be helpful to sort of figure that out so you can figure out your triggers. But in the moment when you're just experiencing it and it's hard, the invitation is to not go down the rabbit hole of why did I get here? How did I get here? What's going on? All of that. It's trying to protect you. And the more we try and push it away and tell it, we don't want your protection. We don't want you here. Again, the more we resist it, the more it's going to want to hang on. So if we can actually learn to inv invite it in or maybe allow it to be there, we can start to to uh, accept and allow for the fact that it's part of us. And so you don't want to cut off a part of you, right? You don't want to cut off your left arm. And if we're trying to cut off the anxiety and what it's trying to protect us from, the fear that's actually underneath the anxiety, which is, again, trying to protect us, then we're cutting off a part of ourself, okay? So let me take you through this. I'm going to try and do it a little quickly just to take you through the steps of RAIN. And then again, um, reach out to me if you have questions. Keep coming back to this in kind of a formal setting where you devote maybe five minutes to just doing this practice so that you can build that muscle and get better at doing it in the moment, okay? So unless you're driving, go ahead and get comfortable either sitting or lying down closing down your eyes if that feels safe for you. Noticing the weight of the body on whatever surface you're on. If you're sitting on a chair, noticing your feet on the floor, noticing your bottom supported by the chair or couch that you're on. Maybe trying to sit up just a little bit straighter so that you're not slouching, inviting some aliveness, some awakening into the body. And if you're lying down, noticing how the floor or bed fully supports the body and you can kind of collapse into it. And let's invite ourselves to arrive here fully by taking some long deep breaths. So inhaling through the nose, nice and slow, allowing the air to fill up your chest and diaphragm and your belly, and then exhaling gently and slowly, exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. And noticing the natural pause at the top before you take the next inhale, inhaling a little more deeply this time if you can, inhaling, inhaling. Noticing the pause at the bottom of the breath and then exhaling gently. Exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. And then one last deep inhale and exhale on your own, letting this be the deepest breath you've taken all day today. Good. Now just let your breath return to normal. knowing that the breath is there for you as an anchor or home base whenever you feel like you might need to return to it to take a deep inhale and exhale and settle your nervous system a little bit. 
And now maybe you came into this practice already feeling a little bit of anxiety. Or if there's a recent situation that you can think of to bring to mind where maybe you experience some anxiety. And bringing that situation to mind and noticing how the body starts to react to that situation. Recognizing is the first step of RAIN. Recognizing what's going on in your body right now when you are experiencing anxiety. Recognizing where you feel that anxiety the most in your body. Do you notice it in your chest or stomach? Maybe deeper in your pelvis or in your shoulders? How does your body know that you are experiencing anxiety? How does your body let you know that? And as we're recognizing where this anxiety shows up for you in your body, I invite you to notice the language that you use around your experience of anxiety. Oftentimes we'll say something like, I'm anxious. I'm feeling anxious. I'm having some anxiety. But notice that language of I am anxious. I am experiencing anxiety. That language is like a magnet. It attaches us to the experience of anxiety. So as we're recognizing when anxiety is coming up for us, I invite you to shift your language a little bit and recognize by saying, I notice the feeling of anxiety. I'm noticing that there is anxiety present in my body. I'm noticing that I'm experiencing some anxiety. And what this does is it allows us to become the observer of the anxiety instead of feeling like we are the anxiety. So recognizing my body is telling me that there's some anxiety here. I notice that in my chest or in my stomach, wherever it might be. And recognizing what that feels like. Is there a tightness or contraction, fluttering, <clears throat> uneasiness, whatever it might be. We're recognizing, plugging into the body and getting familiar with what anxiety feels like in our body. And then we move to the A of RAIN, which is to allow. We're not trying to get rid of or push that anxiety away. We're allowing it to be, to be here in this moment. Opening up to this moment that we're experiencing. Allowing doesn't mean that we agree with the anxiety or even what triggered the anxiety. It simply means that in this moment, we recognize and allow for this experience, these feelings of anxiety to be here. We're not trying to fight it. We're not trying to resist it. We can open up, create some of that space for it to be there. If that anxiety feels present in your chest or stomach, allowing it to kind of float, float in that space that's around the anxiety. And as we're doing this, we can move to the eye of RAIN to begin to investigate, to be really curious about what this anxiety really feels like in your body. I like to try to maybe go to the very center of it. Notice that maybe dark, hard, tense center. And then with curiosity, start to move out from the sensation of that anxiety. Move out a little bit to the edges of it. 
and notice how the feeling of it, that felt sensation starts to change a little bit. As you move out from the center, be curious about how the feeling of that anxiety starts to change for you. And keep moving out, panning out like a camera. And noticing that maybe as you go down your arms or down your legs or up through your torso and neck and head, that those sensations start to change. And some days it may feel like the anxiety takes over your entire body. And in those moments, if your entire body feels like it's been taking over by the sensations of anxiety, I invite you to try to find the space within that, the subtle little changes in sensations of how it may feel more tingly or more hard. And then if you move just a little bit, maybe it feels a little more fluttery or warm. Or maybe there's a spot where it does loosen up a little bit. This inquiry or investigation phase is not done in our heads. We're not trying to figure out why it's here or what caused it. We're being curious about the physical sensations. Recognizing, allowing, and investigating, being curious. And sometimes it might help to come back to your breath, take a breath into some tight or hard feeling area. Just take a breath and soften on the exhale. Again, allowing space for it. And then we can turn to the end of rain, which is nurturing. And I invite you here to really play with this. Find what feels most supportive for you in any moment with your anxiety that you're getting familiar with, that you're being curious about. Asking yourself, what do I need in this moment right now? What would feel supportive for me right now? And maybe that's a hand on the place where you feel the anxiety rubbing your belly or chest. This kind of touch can bring us some comfort if that feels safe for you. And if not, maybe there's a phrase or some words, a mantra that you can whisper to yourself. Even something so simple as, it's okay. This belongs. I have space for this. I can be here with this anxiety. Some simple phrase that might bring you some comfort. It's okay. You might even want to say there is nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. It might even help to have a little token. Maybe you have a stuffed animal, a blanket, a lucky rock, something that you could hold that might bring you some comfort. Again, allowing your physical touch or these words or something that brings you comfort, allowing it to support you. Remembering that you are not alone. You are not alone in your anxiety. Anxiety is so common and your anxiety is unique to you and it can feel lonely, but you are not alone. Almost everyone experiences anxiety. So you are not alone. And you can even try, once you've brought yourself some comfort, found out what you need to support you in the moment, sometimes it can help to kind of talk to the anxiety. 
to ask, what is it that you want? What are you wanting me to hear? And sometimes that anxiety just wants you to hear that I'm scared. I don't feel good about the situation. I'm nervous. I'm uncomfortable. Whatever it is. And you can tell your anxiety, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you for letting me know that you're uncomfortable. Thank you for trying to protect me. We got this. You can be here. I'm not trying to get rid of you. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with me. This anxiety can be here without being all of me. It's just one part of me. And now take a deep breath in, allowing that breath to fill up the whole body. And on the exhale, maybe let it out with a sigh, letting this practice go and allowing it to settle in and taking a moment to notice how the body feels right now and however it feels is okay. And when you're ready, you can gently blink your eyes open and take a moment to orient yourself around where you are. Looking around slowly, maybe at the room where you are, the outside, the trees, wherever you are. Orienting yourself and taking your time to get up from this practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to support you. And thanks for joining me at Olympic National Park today. I will probably talk to you next from Vancouver. Stay safe and well. Bye.